Well, this is going to be a good one. Every now and then, there is someone who, in this series of conversations, who's, who's out of the ordinary. And, and that's a big word because taking a hundred supplements in these conversations is well in between the ordinary. So now we have someone, Martin Fox. You had a very interesting six month journey where you were measuring a couple of epigenetic factors. That will be a good, good, yes. good uh, way to get into. Let's, let, okay. can you tell me about that six month journey of yours? Yes. So let me explain the, the experiment and what I'm doing. And as you say, how to the ordinary a little bit. So my specialization in life is meditation and the kindred arts. So any tradition you know about that practices meditation, I've probably trained in and I've probably traveled to different countries to see the greatest instructors that I can find. So that's my life. It's a quest for self-mastery through meditation practices. Now, if you read the earliest yoga texts, these yoga texts say something very interesting. They list sets of exercises that they believe if you practice them, you will become younger. Now, this isn't just the odd mention. It is a consistent claim throughout early yogic texts. And how to do this is quite consistent as well. Now, some of these exercises are breathing methods. Some of them are postures. Some of them are meditations. But they've got a, a detailed and well thought out philosophy of how we age, how we can prevent aging. And here's the really intriguing thing, how you can stop aging altogether. So I thought, wow, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Now, there's only one problem with that such a thing. If you look at what they expect you to do, it would take someone with great discipline and dedication to do it. Wow, I've, I've trained with the hardest ascetic practitioners in the world. I'm I've practiced meditation every day since my teenage years. Maybe I'm the right person to test this. So what I've started to do is started to follow those instructions, follow those instructions to see, does this work? It's tough. It's tough. But, you know, you're doing two hours of a specific set of yoga exercises every single day with pure focus and some of the disciplines associated with that, that's a real hard trial. But let's be honest, you've got people that you're interviewing who are competing in the Rejuvenation Olympics who are doing you know, two hours of weightlifting or you know, an hour of running, an hour of weightlifting and uh, spending um, time in a hyperbaric ch oxygen chamber, then you're putting on their uh, UV uh, light helmet for 10 minutes and then uh, taking these, as you say, hundreds. So, so there's people who are doing great regimes anyway, which require great discipline. The difference in my approach is this. If you really read these yogic texts, they believe the solution is inside. So you have got the certain potentials within you, you could unlock, which will bring around a rejuvenation. This is actually possible. You can do this. Now, the yoga practitioners did take supplements and some special ways they did that not all of them but some of them did and we can talk about that a little bit in a while but you're saying the six months i've carried on now we're in sort of year two important thing yes i started doing the exercises exactly as instructed took the word uh them at their word so i chose carefully what some of the exercises are uh, because there's all sorts of options in, in, in yoga. And there was a slowing, an ongoing, a slowing of my um, rate of aging and a reversal of my epigenetic age. So that has worked. And 
you can have a look at my website for all the exact figures on this. Um, but it's significant. I believe it was, this is from memory, uh, over a 14 year reduction in epigenetic age. Now, since then, that progress has kind of slowed. And I've tried a few different things, but now I believe I've got the hang of it. So I think I've got the yogic protocol that at least for me works. And I think this is a very exciting thing because now I know that this can be effective. I'm starting to be able to tune into it. I'm starting to really get the feel for the internal exercises as well. And I'm excited to see how far can this go. Now, when you and I first corresponded, you know, briefly on on YouTube, the uh, the Rejuvenation Olympic scoreboard had just been updated for the first time in a while. And I was a bit surprised. You know, I entered into this, but also some of my friends did. Some of my friends who are, have always been vegetarian yoga teachers and you know, they, they've sauna a couple of times a week and uh, they've got a really lovely, healthy lifestyle. And some that are vegan and run for you know as their main hobby, they entered into the rejuvenation Olympics as well. So I was rather surprised. It, that was a wake up call to me as to how good these outcomes for me are. Is that people who are extremely healthy, dedicated individuals are in in the you know two hundred and three hundreds. People I you know they they'd never eat fast food they'd never uh, go to bed late this to me is a real testimony that these techniques there's something to them and you know the ancient indian wisdom hasn't been repeating the same stories and advising the same techniques for for so long without uh, there being some truth behind it and it's coincidental when we come to this in a second that some of these techniques seem to be reflective or some way have similar mechanisms to some of the modern scientific approaches you know i i mentioned the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and things like that so there is some some truth sort of in in there that we're rediscovering some things that i think you know if we went back uh, 800 years or a thousand years i think in the himalayas they knew techniques of rejuvenation uh and you know that's an important thing as well so tell me uh your your thoughts you've had a look at my regime is that correct have you seen the article of what yes. I, do or do you yes. I, I did i did um this is green question uh, how do your your <laughs> your yoga buddies rank compared to you on the rejuvenation olympics yeah so Again, there is there is a uh, correlation in uh, a reduced epigenetic age and a slow rate of um, aging with yoga practices. This is an established thing. You'll see true diagnosis say there's some studies into it. But um, no, they friends of mine have taken the tests and even taken two or three. And if you look at the chart, I think I, I scored at 12. I was in 12th place when we talked. I think I'm in 24 now. There's been a lot of new people. And of course, we've got a real big group now. So there's different people. Some people have got certain medical conditions that slows their aging. Yeah, certain things there. They have drugs. There. There's certain people who are naturally gifted. We're competing against a lot now. Uh, but most of my friends were in the sort of 200, 300 area. And mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. a lifetime of looking after themselves. That surprised me. But I suppose if we think about it logically, we can, if you look at the pace of aging, where's, where am I? I'm looking at the rejuvenation Olympics now. My average at the moment is a 0 0.78. Now, uh, my best is 0 0.77. Well, most people's rate is one. Mm -hmm. One is mm -hmm. the normal rate. So that's quite a big thing to be able to slow that down and to have that effect. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's sort of a, a very uh, important thing. After One more note there is that um, you, you mentioned lifetime of taking care of themselves, which suggests to me that these are older people, right? And 
in the rejuvenation Olympics, the, after the rule change, um, being young is an uh, advantage. So absolutely, yes, absolutely. That. Now that's quite true because your rate of aging tends to be. So we could probably make get someone to the top of the charts, couldn't we? If we just uh, put a ten-year-old into the competition. Oh, I I always wondered about that, you know. And I even asked the true diagnostic people, but they they always misunderstood my questions. So, you know, children actually age quite fast, right? They are like yeah. little things and uh, become so big so fast. So shouldn't they have like... Uh, yes, so I believe, okay, so my understanding is that children's rate of aging is quite slow in terms of what we're talking about. So when we're talking about this great rate, we're talking about the health of your cells, not to do with the biological transformations we associate with aging. So they're different things. Their cells oh. are all nice and healthy, their epigenomes lovely and repaired, their mitochondria is firing well. The cell can tell where the nutrients are and absorb them beautifully. Uh, it repairs itself and there's le very little inflammation and senescence. They're doing wonderfully, just like you and I are now. Uh, yes, with this. Okay, okay. So you did this six month transformation, and since then, how much time has passed? Yeah, I'm not very good with dates. You have a look at martinfox.co.uk, and I can actually see. Give me the happens. results as well. Yes, absolutely. So, yes, you can have a look. Right, so I took the, my first test in March uh, 2023. So, uh, that's that's when we started this this process yeah since then my telomeres have got longer my epigenetic age has gone down it was originally 44.21 years and it moved went down to 29 uh, years um, omic m this is the omic m age from two diagnostic and uh, no this was um they they used to Back in the old days, before we were done, they used to do an intrinsic and extrinsic age. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was before, before the omic age. They still do that, but I don't know what that is exactly. Yes, I think, it's, I think that's the Horvath test. Mm. Oh. But, but let me, um, and my rate of aging slowed, has slowed from 0 0.82 to 0 0.77. But let's let's talk about the testing a little bit. For me, I'm not quite sure where how would accurate these tests have quite got, or because the changing flow of the body, you know, I don't know whether if you took them one morning and then you took them in the evening, whether you'd get different ages that day. I think there is some research with that. So what I've decided is because, I th and I think so, I think there's some error margin just on tests as they go in. If you look at people who are testing often, I think they're good indicators. But I think for me, I, what I've been looking at is how do I look? How do I feel? What signs of age are there? And am I getting more gray hairs or less? And one of the things these yogic texts say says your wrinkles will disappear. Your Gray, gray hairs will become coloured again. Is that happening? Is that not happening? I've been looking out for these. So I've concluded what I'm going to do in the future is I'll carry on doing the Dundon pace and I'll carry on competing with the Rejuvenation Olympics. I'll keep doing the telomere length testing. But I'm not going to get too focused, too focused on, on that. I'm going to f focus very much on what is this body doing? What is it like uh, being me? So here's something I've noticed since I started this yogic regeneration protocol. A big change happened for me, a real big one. When I was young, if I worked out, the next day I would ache and I could feel it. When I got into my 30s, I found it wasn't the next day. It was the day after that I felt it. So I'd have Work out, next day, okay, day after, body would ache. Took an extra day for my body to say, oh, you've, you've done something. This carried on, and I noticed that I couldn't do as much when I got into my 40s. 
if I lifted weights every day or trained every day, I'd feel very, very tired and couldn't do many other things. Since this rejuvenation, I've gone back to the can work out every day, feel the pain the next day. Something has changed in my system, which has taken me rejuvenated back to that earlier age of performance. Now, what my mission is with this is I want to show a different way. There's a lot of people and, you know, they're really admirable people who are doing great things with this rejuvenation work. But some of the stuff they're getting into, I think, is it's going it's a, crossing a borderline that I don't think is very positive. You know, um, blood transfusions from younger people all the time and having, you know, uh, some of these experimental treatments and also doing a lot of things at once. I think it's a little bit concerning. I think that some people are doing so many different treatments at once, something bad may interact soon. You know, that you don't know that that gene therapy is going to hit that experimental drug and ping. So what I'd rather hope is that we're going to be able to show that our mind, our spirit, our being has got as much, if not more, potential. And that's very motivating for me. And these initial results, which have slowed down a bit since, uh, but I think I know why, you know, you, you kind of learn. And I'm not saying that it couldn't be a natural slowdown. The, these are very positive. But let me. Let me tell you, if you were to be able to travel back in time and go into ancient sort of uh, India and you would be able to walk up to a yoga teacher there and you would say, you know, a guru and maybe find someone who really knew this and say, I, I want to regenerate, I want to rejuvenate myself. He'd tell you a few things. First of all, he'd tell you that a natural side effect of your yogic enlightenment, your union, is that this will happen. When, when you achieve, when you go through this process, there is a oneness, and the oneness is between sort of an ageless part of you and this material part. This is, so this is naturally going to happen. He would tell you there are certain things you can do, which if you, if for some reason, maybe you've got a special mission here, maybe you've got duties, you've got people to look after, maybe you haven't done enough of your yoga training you want to complete, there are things you could do to regenerate yourself so you can live longer, uh, which are sort of ways to utilize the energy system in the body. So there's certain methods. What would he tell you? Well, the first one, which is a big one, is called Kaya Kalpa. Kaya Kalpa is a regeneration retreat. Uh, so it, may, uh, it could be translated as body regeneration or timeless body. So this is normal. A physical retreat. Like yes, a physical retreat. You go this to be, another. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they had special protocol where you would go into retreat, you go in seclusion, and you'd you'd drink certain things and eat certain things, uh, which were to regenerate the body. And some of these would be in complete darkness. So they would actually spend, you know, a, a month, two months in complete darkness. But they would also take Ayurvedic medicines and alchemical ones which are sort of uh they used to do medicines uh, which nowadays would be a little bit concerned about uh, you can still get them in india so they believed in special processes that could kind of reset the body and this would be a re-energizing so that might be the first thing that teacher would tell you but then also advise practices which could be alternatives to or complementary because you need someone who knows about these retreats to guide you and you need the time and you know you can't say i'm just going to take you know two months off in the dark uh drinking you know the amala fruit and and good news the person here knows the special medicine and is monitoring me incidentally the stories about that retreat they're, they're quite amazing and they, they said that you would your teeth would actually fall out and you'd grow a new set uh, your hair would fall out you'd grow a new set this may sound really quite unbelievable but you know in japan right now they're developing a treatment which will regrow a new set of teeth you've done it before uh so yeah it may actually be some potential in there even if uh it's just a sign we have our, the same aspirations. But what yoga exercises could you do? Well, first of all, there are many yoga exercises which we are already doing as part of our regeneration, most people. So fasting, the yoga 
uh, teachers, they knew the value of fasting long before uh, they were they were doing blind uh, studies on different forms of genetically standardized mice. They knew that this um, would uh, be able to bring around a regeneration and there were various different practices. One of them is just to have one meal a day. Other, one, other very popular one is that you have three days of no food and you do this once a year. And you, the next day you have a mouthful of food and the day after that you have two mouthfuls of food and you work up until you're back to your normal routine. And you do this once a year. The next regime, which we also see quite often, which is the one I do, I do four four-day fasts a year. Now, I believe that the four-day fast is about right for getting some kind of deep cleansing and repair, turn on autophagy, detect those areas that need to be regenerated and healed, recalibrate the sense of hunger into a more sensible sense, develop good discipline rid the body of excess uh, fat and calories help the metabolism uh, be a bit more flexible i think that's great some studies into having you know low calorie lower calories obviously better for you uh, we know that now we know that you age slower and that you repair more we also know that having a window that's certainly um, ignore some of the there's a bit of um, controversy about this recently but have a look at my website. You see there's countless articles showing having a bit of time every day when you're not processing calories is, is a good thing for your body. It slows aging, oxidative stress. So I, I practice that. And in traditional yoga, you tend to offer your fast something. It's not just you're not just doing it for your own health. You're doing it so you can be more productive. You're doing it so you can help the world. Uh, you're doing you know, it tends to be offered. You're offering up what you would eat, and it's a very positive thing to do. And I tend to have a project. Four days fasting—that's that's actually a challenge every time. I've done young, you know, longer fasts in the mountains, and I've done them when walking and bad, ex, you know, no access to water. But when you're with a group of people, that's doable with ease, you know, because you can't get the food if you're at home. You're saying, you know, cooking the eggs for your uh, wife or something. It's more challenging. And what I find is it isn't the fast that's the worst, though. It's the coming out of the fast. A couple of days afterwards, guy, where you're a bit tired and you've got to maintain control to, you know, carry on being in good temperament and treating people fairly. And you've got to make sure you don't start eating like mad as well because then you've got a license you had four days about food you can eat anything you like now in addition to this in the yogic discipline not in all of them but in some of them is there's an idea of consciously eating don't just eat silence and that there's there's a pranic the prana is the energy the uh, energy of the breath the life force so there's a certain element in eating the food that if you focus on it you're going to absorb that and that's a big thing of their sense of regeneration. There are also some yoga exercises that you could do. So we're all aware of postures that can happen in yoga. Most people are unaware that many of them serve an actual purpose. So there are some of these that they see as particularly pertaining to regeneration. The most commonly mentioned one is one called Vipari Karani Mudra. Vipari Karani Mudra is a shoulder stand, kind of, sort of. It's You're inverted doing a shoulder stand. Uh, this is also related. They did other disciplines which were similar, which were hanging from trees. You know, your, your hands are on your hips? Yes, absolutely. But also, but almost all inverted postures have an association with regeneration. Let me be clear. There's a lot of this yogic breathing. There's visualizations. There's an idea of the internal energy and what you're doing with that internal energy that come with this exercise, which you really need to learn directly from a teacher. But the just being upside down in, in this particular, the hands on your hips, shoulder stand, 
they believe is regenerative. Now, there's lots of reasons why this could be. You know, there's some some of this therapy when they're trying to regenerate the the thymus here, the gland which is in chart. You know, this um, the gland okay. here, which is to do with your immune system. And your immune system is a lot to do with your age. Your immune system does more than just defend you against uh, things. It's part of your repair mechanism. It actually does notice things where they need a bit of repair. I believe that this prolonged posture, and let let me give, tell you the protocol, because then, then you'll realize what they're saying you should do is you should just start with a few breaths, but then add a breath or increase your time every day. And just work up to, and it depends on which of the ancient yoga texts or these original yoga texts you say, but they're talking about in shloka, which is, I think it's an hour and 20 minutes. They're saying do two of those. Two, two and a half hours of shoulder stands in a meditative trance with special breathing techniques a day. Wow. Are you actually doing that? Yes. Two so, and a half so, hour a day. In a yes. so upside the, down position. Yes. Yeah, so what I, I mean, we can talk about my routine in depth a little bit, but this isn't something you should be doing all year round. This is something you should uh, you should work up to a certain point. Um, and I divide my practice into I've got uh, a summer and a winter routine, but that's a long story. But yes, yes, I've this uh, my my routine takes that amount of time, and with with this. This mudra, this is the one that caused that initial big de-aging you saw. That This is the one that caused it. Now, how does it do this? Well, there's a lot of things. First of all, as you start to increase this exercise, you could see why it might turn your grey hairs back or because you've got a lot more blood flow. Maybe it has a difference on the uh, to the uh, different uh, glands. Maybe there's an effect that sort of feeds that. Maybe there's other mechanisms we don't know which are hormonal or repair based to do with this level of inversion. But there's also something that happens when you get beyond you know half an hour of this. You need to start to go a different sort of place. You need to all every form of inner agitation starts to come out so the level of tranquility that you have to do every day is indescribable because you just cannot get through it without entering a state of pure detached sereneness now this exercise this posture so you do some normal postures get yourself in the state and start to go into this special meditative state. There's, as I said, there's visualizations, there's energy exercises. You're refilling your original energy in this posture. This thing as a recharge posture. And the whole of your mind is on this. Now, the other exercise, which I find is good to sort of alternate with. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure the yoga practitioners of old would just be in a shoulder stand for two hours i'm sure they did but they have people there's people in india now who are holding their hand in the air and they've done it for years they haven't moved their hand down in years so this is a minor exercise but to me it's probably more likely that what they would do is breathe in go up for five minutes come down do another exercise for a couple of minutes go up stay in there for five minutes go down you can see this kind of pattern exists in other yoga practices from the time. And one of the and there are other breathing exercises that you might want to consider. One of them is called Bastrika. Bastrika means bellows breath. And this is also one of these exercises that you see repeated references to it being regenerative. What you do is you have is a special technique of hyperventilating. And you hyperventilate to a certain point. Wait, 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 moment. So there is the tumo breathing, the Wim Hof breathing and bioenergetic breathing. So when you're breathe in and out fast, but what I saw you doing is something different. It's like small breaths. Yes. So this is an advanced form of pranayama, yogic breathing. So you really need to have a teacher and to train up to this. But this is a breath which is goes to the lower belly and it's very quick mm -hmm. and then 
after this scale of hyperventilation, you will hold your breath. You and you'll note, notice, hold it. You'll drop. You'll empty your lungs. Empty your mm -hmm. into a, a posture. This is uh, called Mahabanda. It's um, a sealing of all your body parts. It's a. It take a long time to describe. But the take home here for people who aren't into yoga and don't know this terminology, if you look at the mechanism behind the hyperbaric chambers, which are said to increase stem cells, to repair tele telomeres, to repair, it's not just, they don't just increase the oxygen, they increase it and they decrease it, they increase and they decrease it, increase it and decrease it. And it's the cells think they're about to be oxygen deprived. And so it's thought that the mechanism that causes the rejuvenation is up and down, 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 up and down. And the illusion of uh, that you're you're going to, you know, the cells are going to suffocate. I believe, and I, I've actually seen someone prove that the, the increase and drop for someone who's very trained with this is almost as much. The drop is actually a, bit, a lot lower because you completely put yourself into a state, you know, where you're your um, starving box gym. so i think this up and down up and down up and down up and down aside because again there are visualizations there's internal energetic things to do with the energy and so on but i think the physical aspect has probably got the same health benefits but probably a bit more than the hyperbaric oxygen chamber so i think you've got this this interesting you know when you're starting to look at these techniques Okay, so something I was wondering, you have increased your telomeres, and for a long time I thought it's it's not possible, but it was just my uh, my ignorance because scientific literature, as far as I understood, couldn't reproduce telomere increase, uh, telomere length increase for 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 a long time. But uh, then I started realizing the rejuvenation athletes are actually almost uh, many of them are reporting their telomeres being increased. But I also noticed that they are they are they they are they are taking something, right? Like there is a there is a guy who is who's doing some kind of uh uh medicine and some, some kind of herbal medicine and that's what he thinks is increasing his telomere size there is dave pasco who is doing telomerase activators but and and then there is the hyperbaric chamber which is supposedly increasing and i was wondering like okay so you don't seem to be targeting your telomeres with supplementation you don't seem to be hyperbaric chambering so what could it be Maybe this could be why why your telomeres increased. Am I on yes. point or you um, have a better theory? Yes, yeah, so I think I think that's a connection. I think it might be this exercise, but I also do think the four day fasts might do something. I think that, that those two may combine. One thing I have found, and this is something just worth mentioning. Do go up and down a bit. If you get if you get even the telomere test. Yes, so I've I've had a few, oh. and uh, I'll, I'll publish a little bit more on them. And they, they, you know, if you get ill, it looks like you know that can really knock them for a while and things like that. So yes, I think this could be part of it. So I think I think this breathing technique is is responsible. I really believe in it, uh, but I think it might be a combination. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think combination is a lot of it. Really, I've got this feeling, and. Please be, please forgive me. A lot of this is intuition, but I've got a feeling that for me, my next step is one of cultivating tranquility uh, to a higher level. And I've got a, some of my tests. I can't remember the specific ones. that showed some high inflammation levels, um, and I thought, oh, that's strange. I thought, you know, there's me having turmeric every day and having saunas and running and you know, exercising. Why? Why is this uh, happening? I think, I think some of it with your body is you've got to create space for it to just to be able to regenerate aside from all this, you know, uh, the, the hubbub of life. Now, the next set of exercises I want to mention are more popular in China than they are in India, but they do exist in both. And these are quite legendary. 
uh, and the idea is that these these can be um, can help regenerate your body to the point where there's you know there's stories about people being mistaken for their children and stuff and doing them. This is uh, called Dand Bask or Dan Baski in Indian or Iki Ching in um, the uh, the Chinese. This is spiritual like muscle training. So this is you go into a sort of meditative state and you have certain breathing exercise and you breathe the health into your muscles and you tense them and then hmm. and you do so with all the different parts of the body and this is like breathing health into each one of your muscles but this is a really good discipline and um i think there's a lot in this and this being able to maybe this is you because you're developing ability to control your nerves to put that great forcefulness into them this is also used by Shaolin monks for strength, strength feats. That's how they sort of do these big things. It said this technique can, in, in India, in Mysore Palace, they used to practice this and look at themselves in a river at the palace, you know, the grounds and watch this happen. So this is a, a very beautiful. So think of this as a meditative body tensing exercise. So then eventually you can move to, to li- you can do things. You can lift weights while doing this this energy breathing and i think there's there's a lot there both energetically you know but also in terms of your your nerves your nerve function is a real big thing for your your health and and maybe also just the visualization i mean how how many of us you know could stand there look at ourselves in the the river and imagine ourselves in a beautiful state of health and healing and becoming younger and more energetic and stronger yeah and I, I and these kind of practices also they bring out some of us in rejuvenation community they're doing this for different reasons some of us are doing it because we've got a real positive self-image and we want to be here in order to help more make the world better we want to contribute more some of us are maybe a little bit concerned about death and we've got but we've got negative self-image oh hang on your mind is more clever than you think if there's a part of you thinking i don't deserve to be here i don't want to be here i don't like this world or i don't like this body that's that's really going to go against you i really think you've got to solve that so yeah this this kind of spiritual weightlifting i actually wrote a book on it there you go the secrets of rejuvenation zen warrior exercises there's an exercise there's a whole book on these ex- these exercises if you want to have a go and and of course most i think i think i've only found some studies that people who lift weights their skin is younger and they think this is actually just because there's a there's a knock-on effect yeah it keeps uh people people who lift uh do strength training and of course strength is one of the biggest uh, indicators of all cause mortality so you know you're, you're more likely to recover from a car accident or an illness or a bad shock or anything like that you know so um that's that's it so let's let's keep that strength training going whether you're doing it through this or whether you're going to do yoga postures where you end up balancing on one arm you know there's a lot more strength in yoga than you might think from outside then other things that are meant to make you be rejuvenated this gets into areas where it's almost purely meditative and they're a bit strange for us to understand from the the western sort of point of view especially if you don't know yoga there are um, certain energetic exercises whereby you're going to there are energy channels in the body on the left and the right of the the spine and their energy the exercise to join them and join them into redirect them into a kind of unity and there's some of these postures based on this and these mahamund mudra mahabanda and mahavida they reoccur a lot in the texts. This would take, you know, you and I would need another a whole new episode to talk about this. And and for the, the average person who's tuning in here, the average person watching this is probably someone interested in rejuvenation, interested in rejuvenation Olympics, interested to see someone's using yoga and doing okay with it, and would like to hear about that. They're they're not here for. Uh, a yogic philosophy lesson they want to sort of hear some other things you mentioned that 
yogis, and, and, and this was a very interesting point. So, so, because people in the world of yoga, spirituality, they have a huge aversion to supplements. And then you mentioned that, hey, actually, old yogis had their own alchemical laboratories. Mm. So, wow, that's that's interesting. Yes. So let, let's be clear. So not some some yogis. So here's what we know. Some yoga practitioners were doing uh, what, the, you know, alchemy. So they're making remedies that are for health and even you know trying to make gold and gems and things recreate those we know some of them are doing that and there's some actual some some depictions of them some ancient depictions i think those quite rare but a lot of the yoga terminology comes from this and a lot of the yoga philosophy comes from the um, indian alchemy so even the exercise i described to you they're normally and they've normally got a, a term. So I'll give you an example. You may, if you know yoga, have seen bandas. With bandas is when you seal off a part of your body. This is, you know, to hold your your neck band or your these are these are named after um they used to put layers of um material, normally a form of clay or lined lined with a bit of mud, between two pots when they wanted to combine two metals or two compounds together so a lot of their terminology came from this i'm not a historical expert on yoga i could point you at some wonderful things one thing you do see which is quite intriguing is ayurveda and yoga they do seem to be quite separate at the same time in the same milieu uh, but yoga practitioners certainly were taking buying pills and they were certainly undertaking retreats that involved certain medicines now what were the ones they liked what what would what the yogis if they took pills what would they take well i'll tell you the the normal things which are seen as real blessed wonderful healing rejuvenating things that you can take eat or have in the yoga text including the ones that are made for householders like you and i not you know you're not a celibate monk you're you're someone who's got a household are as follows uh, there's a form of um indian gooseberry they're called amala and this indian gooseberry i mean they believe in it so much they it really is i mean you and i is a form of therapy if we're getting a bit you know run down we take a week off and just drink this juice every day it's so much so you're talking about alchemy there are texts where they're they're really trying to work out how to join different things together to make the philosopher's stone to make the elixir alive and they're doing all this and there's all these complicated things and different recipes and everything and at the end it says or you can take amla juice i can't find the latin name for it have a look on my website it's in my list of supplements amla juice whether it's got a difference to the western gooseberry i don't know what what's in there but as i said i've been following their advice trusting them it's got very high vitamin c i know that but they believe there's a lot more and they think it can sort of hold this it can help feed certain currents in the body if eaten properly but the second one which is absolutely ubiquitous there is no way there's no doubt at all that this is a genuine beautiful healing food that is going to bring you back to health and make you thrive. Milk, cow's milk. There's even forms of, of retreats and training where they're, they're going to be drinking cow's milk on a daily basis. So that's, a, that's a big, big thing. And sometimes it's this amala. Uh, amala mixes with, with cow's milk. milk. I can't quite imagine what gooseberry juice and cow's milk tastes together. I kind of keep them separate. And then we've got turmeric. And turmeric and black pepper is a combination we have now well i was really surprised to see they did the same uh, but they use a slightly different pepper than us and this is this was actually in pills so you could actually buy them now they weren't coated like we have pills they're just a sort of crumbly someone someone that had to condense them so these three certainly occur as a yogic remedy uh, and as a thing that's going to aid their yoga practice the, the, these are the ones that aren't you know <laughs> 
they used to do a thing where they used to um, render mercury non-toxic. Um, I've seen some modern persons uh, do a study where they say they've managed to do this. That's great. That's great. But that, yeah, that's not the experimentation I'm going in. I need someone else to try to try the heavy metal remedies from medieval India. I, I'm, I'll keep on. <laughs> I'll keep on experimenting with the breathing and the postures. But I've got to be absolutely clear here. Supplementation was not a very common thing with yoga practitioners. And they were more, far more likely to have an internal solution. Now, why did it wasn't this very useful compared to the medicine at the time? If you go to someone and say, I'm feeling ill, and you say, certainly, just spend three months training in this special breathing exercise and yoga posture, and I'll get rid of that for you. That's not very accessible for most people. So people didn't tend to go to yoga practitioners for solutions. They did, but they didn't tend to as much as they did other, other sources. So I take all these. Now, I went through a phase. When I first started this, I got a bit, a bit confused. There you go. The guy got a bit of mission creep. So the mission is to, you, to see if yoga techniques make you younger. But somewhere in that first sort of year or so, the mission creep to to do anything that makes me younger and i didn't see it happening so what happened is i'd watch a video and it'd say hey take this pill and it'll this is going to help you with your quest and yeah i'll do that yeah i'll do that and eventually i did have you know you have these regimes where everyone's got huge amounts of pills and they take this in the morning and they do that in the afternoon i i got that far and i thought actually this is going to confuse the results, Martin. So I thought you've just got to get a bit simple here. Get a bit simple. Because often, you know, I've got calorie restriction, I'm fasting. I want to make sure I get enough nutrients. I think there are some advantageous compounds that are appearing. You know, I think there are some good things, you know, like with the, uh, I think olive oil and NMN, and these probably are having a good effect. But to keep it simple and not sort of get, too worked up and pulled into things i think and uh yeah so that's where i am with things a where are you approach what exactly do you take right now so now i i take the things i listed to you the yoga things um do you know novos do yes their, um, i take novos and i t also take a sort of mixed greens thing you know which is like you know um you, you can get this stuff where it's yeah and that's in particular because I'm still cutting my body fat. I'm still cutting my myself to to the point where I, where I feel it's at the optimum. Again, this is going to sound really weird, but some of these exercises, I can actually feel it's not quite working for me at this weight. I think I'm still carrying a bit too much body fat. So when you've got reduced calories, and in our modern society where I don't believe the food we've got is as nutritious as it would be naturally, you know, there's a plant, there's a field that's been ploughed over yeah, uh, you yeah. know, a thousand times. This is, yeah, I, I think it's good to have this. So I think that's enough that it's a fair wind, but it's not going to try a, a giant curveball. And they also say this is true if these exercises have got the potential they say they have, then it should start to become quite clear. Now, I wish I wish they'd get to uh, um, you know on the rejuvenation Olympics. The search by country does that work for you? There, I don't think there is such a thing. Okay, have a look. I'll show you that it's there. Oh, it I see. Wow. Okay. Thanks for pointing me to this. Oh yeah, it doesn't seem to yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. So that's a bit. It's good yeah. to, when when you're doing these kind of long haul disciplines it's good to be able to have a motivation like this it's good to have to have something and you know obviously you and i i know you're taking part in it as well are aware that there's a lot of people doing this there's a lot of people so i kind of i found myself thinking oh i want to just improve what on myself but i'd like to see how do i compare to everyone else in the uk that's taking part rather than 
you know, what, what is this, a cohort of 60,000 or something? Yeah, I like to see, yeah, that's an intriguing thing. Yes, so other other things I do, other things I do. So I think there's a, a connection, I think, as above, so below. So I think all these interventions and things like that, that's that's great. But how you live your life day to day, are you in a state of tranquility? Are you um, are you improving at what you do? So I try to encourage in the moment ongoing development. So when I'm working, I'm really working. When I'm sleeping, I'm really sleeping. When I'm playing, I'm really playing. And try to improve what I'm doing in that moment. I think there's a lot about stimulation. You hear all this stuff of rejuvenation Olympics and people taking that. And you, you say to them, what is your routine for your body? And they say, yeah, on, on Thursdays and Fridays, I lift weights and everything like this. And then I take this supplement. I have pre, you know, I get creatine and everything like that. But I don't take this before that because of the inflammatory response. And then when I go to bed, you say, so what about your mind? I say, oh, I try to get a good night's sleep. Okay, I think there's a bigger connection between the stimulation of your intellect, your mind, the development of that, and your body than we are quite aware of yet. I think we're going to find you're probably aware that people who uh, who have got had higher education they actually test epigenetically younger. I think we're actually going to find its way around in in a while that if you if you learn you may get younger. I think the mind affects the body, affects the nerves. So I think that's a really big, important thing. What I try to do is make sure that everything is an opportunity to improve. And you can see that in life, a lot of people aren't doing that. If I said to you, I want you to find someone right now who's been doing a job for 20 years, you know, eight hours a day, 20 years, who hasn't improved at it too much, you wouldn't have to go far. Now, this is an intriguing thing, because if I said to you, right, you and I, we're going to do a, a juggling show together and we're going to practice juggling for an hour a day. I, th- I reckon you and I would be, be able to do a, our show after a couple of months at least. An hour a day, you, you improve very quickly. So there's some level of engagement people aren't having in their job whereby you go to the bar and they still don't know the price of things or what drawers their little umbrellas are in and they've been there for 15 years so what i'm trying to do is make sure i'm fully engaged with that i make sure i practice memory if i have to look something up twice i'll memorize it if i if i if i've done use the sat nav to go somewhere twice i'll try to go by memory so I want to make it, my, my goal is to make sure that everything, this is an eloquence lesson for me and a listening lesson, you know, because I want to learn from you as well. When I write my signature and I'm signing something, that's a calligraphy class. And I chop vegetables, you know, that's sword lessons, you know, uh, trying to make sure that everything is is learning. And I think some of that might be, how you actually are may be more important than what you do. The other thing, I think some of this rejuvenation and fitness stuff could become a stressor for people, it could be counterproductive. They're thinking about age all the time and they're worrying about things and, oh, have I eaten too many calories? Did I keep to my eating window? Did I have a glass of wine? Am I, have I gone to bed on time? What's my sleep score today? My God, my sleep score's worse than yesterday. They're so anxious. No wonder their sleep score's getting worse. Right now, when I mess up my diet, I eat a lot of stuff. The next day, it's going to take me an entire hour to try to figure out how much calories and macros and stuff I'm eating. So I know what you're talking about. (laughs) So, So one of the equations, and again, please take none of this as any disrespect towards everyone. So... A lot of this has been led by um, Brian Johnson, who I think is a, a splendid man. I think he's a very impressive person. I think he's doing, he's really making us rethink. I think he's very insightful. However, I have got some things where I think, hmm, I'm, I'm unsure about that. 
So one of the things I'm unsure about is, is standardization itself a good thing? So your genes and your body's abilities express themselves, but um, and, the, and if they don't express themselves, you lose that ability, use it or lose it. So if now and again, you and I have two glasses of wine rather than none, surely that makes the alcohol processing system go, wow, well, hang on, wake up. Or surely if you and I have one high calorie evening meal, that could, that could zap that up. Now, I understand from a practical point of view, that can open up discipline problems. That's the problem we've got here. So I think the ideal state might be uh, that we are able to control ourselves completely. Incidentally, the yogic point of view on alcohol is don't have it at all. There are There's one anomaly that says that there are certain sweet alcoholic drinks that are okay for yoga practice. But 99.9% .9 of yoga texts say this is not good. Now, the reason they say you shouldn't drink alcohol isn't to do with health or anything like that. They believe that if you drink alcohol, you're practicing being drunk. Whatever you practice, you become more like. So uh, don't, don't put yourself in a mental state you don't want to be more like. You become what you, you focus on. But yes, so standardization. So that's one thing I, I wonder. I wonder if you could be too standardized and some of the things that Brian might want to put into his protocol is, or it might already be there. It might be there and I don't know because, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not living with him. Variation. I think now and again they should say, and they, he shouldn't be the decision maker. The uh, pro people in charge of protocol say, hello, Brian, today you're eating this pizza. He says, what? What do you mean? That's not part of blueprints. It is today. It is today because we want to. We want your body to be able to handle excess now and again, and you know your body, your your gallbladder to be able to excrete uh, extra bile in order to do this. That's one thing I've got. You know, I, I wonder if it should be introduced. Um, all my family are food scientists, you see, so I, I hear a lot about these things. It makes me think. The other, the other um, aspect, I wonder. Again, I. I I think it's great some of the stuff he's doing, but I wonder about too many things at once that we might think, oh, what was it that did the work? Did that work because of that or did this work because of this and this, that one and crossover? I just wonder, I think his regime, it might be that if he just held out on his basic regime longer, we might find something surprising. Could it be if you just have a very good lifestyle, your rate of aging and your epidemic age just keeps dropping? Could it be that aging in a human is a repair problem and it's not that serious a one if you get it right? I don't know, but I'd be excited to see uh, what, what happens with it in, in the future. Brilliant. Now, have you got any thoughts or questions about everything I've said? I realise you've, you've had this wonderful soliloquy from me, uh, but it's been a bit of a, a monologue. One, one of the things, just regarding standardization is I sometimes tell my, my movement routines to my guests and I have movement routines that I change. I, I do a follow along video on YouTube every single morning and I always change the follow along video. And, and this results to me every week doing something else. Right. Sometimes I do Tai Chi, sometimes yoga, sometimes uh, bodybuilding, sometimes uh, martial arts. Uh, I'm doing everything there is. So there are two kinds of responses I got. Uh, the, the people, the athletes who are like more laid back is like, wow, that's great. The people who are not that laid back, but try to control everything is like they could never do this because because their tests would be invalid, right? Their measurements would be invalid. If you do such a variation, then you just, you just, mm. it's chaos for, for them. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, a few things on that. I am um, sometimes when I get a little bit, how do I put this? You can lose the eye of the tiger if it's just you. Uh, I got an app on my phone for weightlifting 
I realised that for years I thought I was trying my hardest until I had a little app saying to me, you need to lift a little bit more in order to beat what you did last time. Oh, OK, that's quite surprising. Wow. So the same with what your, your variations uh, are going on there. Sometimes I think variation can be a good way to challenge you because you get into a little bit of a rut. I think we must have a, you know, how do I put this? We've got to have respect for the trying, Brian's trying to, not just Brian, there are other people at the top of mm-hmm. this chart who are trying to, who are using the scientific model, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they are, they're trying to assess what they're doing uh, repeatedly. And as you say, moving from Tai Chi to Stone Train, they wouldn't know. For some reason, your approach reminds me a little bit of, of CrossFit. Do you know CrossFit? Yes. Um, I, I'm I not a huge fan of way. it. <laughs> yeah, so it might be another way to stop you getting complacent. But I think you need to be disciplined not to just sort of overdo it. You mm-hmm, need to mm-hmm. scale it down and slowly slowly work, work up. After you, sorry. So, so, so something I learned. So what I'm doing is these things are 10-minute workout, workouts, mm-hmm. right? But I'm also doing proper workouts. Now, the the problem with CrossFit is that they are not periodizing. So they are doing the heavy workouts, the heavy runs after the heavy weights after. So, so they do everything all at once forever, or at least the CrossFit people I've ever met. Right. And in martial arts, there are, or, or almost any kind of sports, there are periodizations, right? Like, uh, Right now, for this session, three months, you're trying to get your physicals up. The next three months is technique. So, so, yeah. so that, that seems to be missing from the CrossFit forks that I've encountered myself. Mm. Uh, but I'm derailing the conversation, so please <laughs> continue. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Um, obviously, with many lifestyle things that we're not talking about, um, I try to make sure that I don't take you know, the lift, I take the stairs, I carry things rather than have them delivered. I run to work every day, these kind of things. But I, I think you could overdo exercise and wear your body out as well. I think a lot of things are dose dependent. I think there's some studies that show that as well. What I'm hoping to do with this, I, I continue to, to really enjoy and study these yogic texts, but what's actually happening is doing them I'm starting to gain inner awareness and starting to be able to see and observe in myself how it's working and when it's working. It's a very exciting time for you and I in the sense that we have this a chart and we can see. I look at the people take it appearing and I think, wow, what's it going to look like in six months' time? There are people there who their best pace is 0.53 or 0.56 there are people on in this uh, rejuvenation olympics who are aging at half the rate of rest of humans are they five i don't know but you know it's an intriguing thing i mean five years old and i think it's so i suppose in a sense what i'm saying is that this needs to carry on working and improving for me to remain in this sort of i think i've in the top 100 or it, yeah, so I was once in the top 20. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, I think the experiment continues and maybe I can, I can, you know, come back and let you know later on how it goes. For me, it's enjoyable to watch and to see the, the areas that seem to be combining as well. What everyone seems to be doing is, is intriguing. May I point out a challenge for you here? Okay. Um, I noticed, so just generally about games, uh, games are, are great because they give you a clear goal and, 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 and clear rules how you're getting there. Now, that's, that's not only the greatness of games, but the drawbacks as well, because from reality is like infinitely rich set of goals and games make you focus on one thing. So it gives you a tunnel vision. And as you mentioned, that your, 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 
what was the word that you used mission mission creep you are getting into yeah. a mission creep yeah. right that's kind of what's happening that hey this game is changing your goal right yes yeah, so you're absolutely right we could and there are people who are doing this they're finding out what you can do there are certain things that maybe you could do that could influence the test hang on the goal isn't to get the good test the test is meant to be showing you other things so i like you um um not uh, i'm being careful to remain detached from the outcomes of the the actual um rejuvenation olympics i enjoy improving against myself but i'm aware that there are some limitations there's a bit of up and down with the test and i'm also aware that the test may not be showing everything uh there may be some some other things at play yes i'm keeping for me from my mission uh i'm keeping focus on what it's like being me for other people i think it is important there's a lot of people claiming things a lot of people say this works that works i know stuff and especially when you get into area of spirituality so it's very a lot of people saying oh i can i can teach you this so i've got this special skill or i've got these special abilities so that's why in this case i think it's very important for me to get into the ring so there are other people you know there's people who are doing all sorts of things as you said taking certain medications some people having saunas every day some people having one meal a day i'm saying i'm doing these yoga exercises and they work i think it's important for me to, to be able to say test me i'm saying i can make this body younger test me i i can and and as I speak to you, I've never been as physically strong. I've never been able to run as fast and as you know as I I can now. I've never felt more healthy. The tests seem to be showing it's going in that, that continuing to go in that direction. Let's see. Let's see how it continues. I have I have a firm but humble confidence in these arts and what I can achieve with them. Let me explore a little bit of your basics so you have talked about that you're doing yoga but uh, what are how, how do you move around your days right so do you mean as in you know where do you do this martin what time do you do this is that what you mean or do you mean, tell me what are the physical postures you're doing oh no i'm okay so that, it's a comprehensive question you mentioned that you are trying to switch uh, everyday things into harder things like taking the steps instead of the elevator but uh, so i mean this and i also mean like do you do other kinds of workouts as well so all yeah, kinds of movement so, absolutely so i'm very physical as a person so i work for, as a, a book publisher and I'm, I'm always the first person to be the person unloading the books. I run to and from work when possible. Though I'm the managing director, I, I do a lot of the physicality. I embrace that opportunity. I do have a car and I'll drive for any longer distances or use a train for that, that kind of thing. Other workouts. Um, so I, I do I lift weights using that chi ching. So with, with breath. And what I do is. I always keep that going, but once a year I'll do this inversion posture for six months. Once a year, any more than that, and you, you're going to start to go a little bit funny, and you're going to, yeah. And mm -hmm. I believe that that six month period is the big rejuvenation. But in other times, I still practice meditation. I've still got my own meditation goals, and I, I focus a lot more on strength uh, training. I count my calories. This is because my nature is one which is um i i love food and my mind's really cunning i wish i was as persuasive as my mind can be over things now bedtime i just goes to bed straight away there's no inner resistance i don't understand why any you know anyone has a problem with that you know um exercise love to exercise meditation what a joy but with food there's always some part of me thinking, you know, I, you've, you've worked out hard today. This isn't 
over your calories and it is and <laughs> so there's always some misjudgment some convincing force why by today is the exception and tomorrow we'll sort this out don't worry and i've got to the point with it where i've decided my higher self my enlightened self needs to be in control of all my decision making and it's naturally in control of many things yeah naturally is uh, a cool calm beautiful thoughtful self but i've the personality that's called martin fox is can no longer be in charge of my diet because food is celebratory for me and it's your but now uh, let me be clear and you've got to be clear with this one for me overeating is not other people's overeating i've got high standards with it i'm pretty trim it's a bit like if you if i had you know a glass of wine it would be a rare thing if i had two i think cough we're going crazy tonight martin even in my youth my getting drunk wasn't what other people would see as significant i'm very sensitive to things so but with food to fine tune i cannot leave any excuse so either it's got to be exactly proportional you eat two plates of food a day martin or you've got to weigh these things out to keep things in order this is my personality it may be that other people have their own ones where you know they're they've got to keep a, a short reign on themselves maybe it's to have exercise or sleep for other people so that that's a that's a good thing maybe also you know sort of saying how do you how do you sort of function with things a lot of things is what i don't do i don't have a television i don't own a television i don't read fiction i don't play computer games socially i have my social contact with people is the people are really inspiring but i'm not very sociable you can't be when you're doing two and a half hours of <laughs> what's your day um i do you know I, I look after my house i garden i've got a pet cat of you know got a joy a joyous job i love what i'm doing i love freemasonry uh which is the the subject we publish about so i i go to meetings it's a lovely thing to be with uh, such inspiring people but i don't do that as much as some people you know some people go to lots of meetings i go to a few everything's very select so i keep a lot of space in my life for my uh, my own training for, for planning i don't want to be doing things in a hurried way a thoughtless way that's that's a, almost as important as what we do do and when we think in terms of self-improvement we tend to think in terms of taking something up learn another language learn to play a musical instrument you know uh, learn, start doing running start doing this hang on a second you know that's one way of creating you can create by putting something extra you can put the paint on something and and paint a picture that's how you can do it by adding but you can also make things by removing so you could get a block of wood and you can chisel away things to make a statue or you know a block of stone and chisel away so you take things away and a lot of the value in things is by what's not there it's the hole that makes the wheel work it's the hole that makes the so one thing i would say is with a rejuvenation regime I honestly believe your body's trying to do it. It's already trying to go, uh, repair the cells better. It's already trying to get rid of the, your senescent cells. It's already trying to be younger. If you start to make space for that, you stop clogging it up with too many calories or with toxins it's got to process. You stop um, resisting when it says for you to rest. But you start to actually make room give up some hobbies make sure you've got space to be calm you'll be surprised how good you are at things at everything in life if you've got time if you give yourself some time to be good at it rather than you're rushing into a meeting you haven't prepared for or you're trying to make a meal and you haven't got time to make a good one your rejuvenation routine may be more about letting go than grasping there's my thoughts okay so here you are enlightening away and here we are, other people who are not you. Now, what would be something that you would tell us that you strongly believe 
to be the case, but very few people believe the same. Yeah, so n nothing is separate, is what I'd say, is we tend to think things are, are separate and they're not. So um, we tend to think of a very simplistic way of looking at things. So we say, uh, I'm, I'm depressed. You go to the doctor and say, I'm depressed, this is a pill. What the doctor could ask if, you know, again, it's going to be time to say, well, what colour is your bedroom? What kind of clothes do you wear? Who you, what music are you listening to? Who, who do you spend your time with? What's your philosophy? What's your favourite film? What kind of films do you watch? Everything's enjoined. And I think that wholeness, that, and actually it's a lot more joined than we think. You know, you and I talking right now, we're like two brain cells zapping ideas across. If I'm telling you an idea that I learned from Buddha or from a yogic text, is that his idea or my idea because I've agreed of it and I'm telling you, is that now your idea? Wow. If a, if a tree um, has a, an apple growing on it and the bird eats it and transmits it uh, out, out through its digestive system, is that bird part of the tree's reproductive system? But it's just one that it keeps externally. So, you know, these things come interlinked. And with our regeneration and rejuvenation, it's not in a vacuum. All the things around you are part of this. And nothing's hidden, you know. We can see the things which are of life and are of youth. That's not, you know, you get the people, and you do get this, don't you? You get people who will do anything but the obvious. Uh, Confucius said, the way out is through the door. Why do so few people take it? And you'll see people, sports people, they'll take performance enhancing drugs before they'll sleep properly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's, there's people taking, you know, just make sure that the, the whole thing is interlinked. Your attitude towards life is a big part of your age. Your environment is a big part of your age. It's, it's all one. And, um, there are a lot of deep mysteries to do with this uh, vision of everything being conjoined. So, Martin Fox, that was that was awesome. You have why wow, you speak like a guru. <laughs> uh, how I, I I hope I brought light uh, to some people here. Uh, that's the you know the meaning of guru. But here's the important thing: is these are beautiful natural things. So it's, it's lovely that yoga teaches them. But all of us know that our breathing is something good for us. You know, we go do that. You go take someone to the seaside. They stand there and have a deep breath. We all know our posture is related to our mind. You know, good posture, good mind. Uh, so these are all natural things, just bringing some awareness to them. But I will, I will come back later on. Uh, let's you and I have an agreement that if, if this continues to work, if I, if I, remain in this uh, uh, slipstream of yogic success we can have a check-in next time and as, as as it continues yeah or come to a panel discussion with other rejuvenation athletes That's yes absolutely <laughs> wonderful all right okay. thank you it's very much thank you very much